Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special edition of the Belmont Journal, Belmont's own program for hyperlocal news and community affairs programming. I'm your host, Roger Colton. The coronavirus has shut down Belmont schools, which means that Belmont's kids uh, are at home for the next, at least the next three weeks. And we have many parents in Belmont talking and asking about what they could and should be doing with their uh, children with their school age children while they're not in school to help us uh, learn about uh, how to handle that situation the belmont journal has asked cindy breitmeyer who is known as boston tech mom with the uh, website bostontechmom.com to help us out and to uh, give us some advice uh, cindy thank you for uh, joining us this morning it's good to be here Cindy, let's start out with some general resources. Uh, can you uh, talk about what parents should be doing in an age appropriate uh, situation when they're going to have kids home for the next three weeks? Sure. So, you know, to start off acknowledging this is a difficult time for everyone. And I think that having some structure and routine built into our kids' day is really important for them to keep them calm and, and happy and occupied at home. So what I've done today is gather together what I hope are very easy ways to keep your kids engaged and happy and learning. And I really wanted to make it easy for parents because I know everybody's busy. Most parents might be working at home alongside kids. So I've got resources here that you can quickly review. You can peruse ideas. You can find something that's well suited for your child and you can get started today. So the first one I want to talk about is by Scholastic, the book publisher. In response to coronavirus, they just launched 20 days of free online lesson plans for pre-K and up. And according to them, the courses provide approximately three hours of learning per day, including writing and research projects, virtual field trips, and geography challenges. Day-to-day -day projects are gonna keep your kids reading, writing, and learning. So that's, I think, a great place to start. And can I, uh, one of the things that, uh seems important is that there are materials, and this is a question, not a comment, there are materials uh, for K through 12, K through 8? Yeah, it starts, there... with, it starts with pre-K and goes on up through teens. Okay. Yep. The next suggestion I have is to look at education.com. It's an educational site, and this one's for pre-K through grade 5. I've written about them before on Boston Tech Mom. It's a terrific website for parents who are looking for lesson plans, projects, games, and activities. And it covers subject areas like math, science, reading, writing, social studies. And the good news is that many of their materials are free. So I'm really trying to focus on also free, free things here for parents. Okay. The next one is uh, offered by New England Aquarium, also in response to coronavirus. Each day at 11 a.m., they're going to post content on their social media channels including live videos with educators, these behind the scenes looks at animal care and fun activities for kids. So I think if you're thinking of creating a schedule for your kids or at least penciling in a few things throughout the day, that would be a great one to put on your calendar for 11 a.m. And um, it, 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 let's follow up on that too. Uh, parents don't need to keep their kids engaged from nine until three. It's that you want to have periods of time when... That's they're I, saying yeah I think that's realistic I mean I'm sure there's some people scheduling hour by hour but you know we're all trying to adjust to this new life right now so I think in you know having sporadic things throughout the day and maybe some of them are a little more learning oriented like what I'm talking about and then including the walks you're going on and taking your dogs for walks and you know playing in your backyard I think you can intersperse it and I think we all have to be flexible right now and the things that I'm suggesting, hopefully your kids can maybe be doing these, maybe they're sitting next to you or on their own so you can continue to do what you need to do um, rather than having to be hand, hands on with your kids throughout sure. the, learning, yeah, the learning experience. Okay. And then the last resource right now that I want to talk about in this first category is podcasts. So I'm a huge fan of podcasts and there's now, um, they're now making podcasts especially for kids. And I think this is a great opportunity for your kids to learn something new and, and think about what they've learned and then maybe discuss it with you over, over dinner time. And since my area um, is STEM, I wanted to tell parents about three STEM podcasts today. They're all produced by public radio. 
The first one's called Brains On, and that's a science podcast for kids. The second one is But Why, a podcast for curious kids. And this show is led by kids where they ask questions so they can get answers. And then the third one is Wow in the World. And those are stories about science, technology, and innovation. So I think these are four areas that you could get started really quickly for free and, and then see how it goes with your kids. Okay, now I, I'd like to emphasize to folks that you're not only a Boston tech mom, but you've got a, a daughter in the, the Belmont school. So yeah. you're a, a Belmont parent as well. So uh, combining those two things, uh, is it okay? I, I've seen questions about, is it okay for people to relax their desire to keep kids uh, <laughs> off? Sorry, keep kids what? To keep kids off of uh, uh, the, the internet. Uh, you know, some parents really want to limit the, uh, uh, how much their kids are addicted to their machines. Uh, do we relax that or? You know, I think that's a family by, by family basis. I know having a teenager, the, the good news about the internet is that she's been able to keep in touch with her friends over the last few days. They've been, you know, FaceTiming and doing video conversations. So I think that's super important because, you know, these kids are social, they've got their friends. And um, so keep that going. Uh, a lot of the ideas I have today, you need to access online, but also you can then sometimes download things and, and work offline. So again, I think that's definitely a family by family decision. Okay, and uh, one other question, and the answer may be the same, uh, since you and I didn't talk this over beforehand. Uh, is it important to mix uh, outside time with uh, working with your hands to engaging your mind, or am I making distinctions? That no, I think that's, I mean, that's what their normal day was like before. So, you know, my daughter's been walking your dog, <laughs> which I think is super important. She's been doing hikes at Rock Meadow in Belmont with friends six feet apart. So I think, you know, keeping that outdoor access and, and getting your physical activity is super important. And um, so I think it's really a blend of, of fun, pleasure activities, still keeping in communication with friends, and then learning when you can. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us, uh, Cindy. It's been a, a great help, uh, hopefully, to parents. We've been speaking with Cindy Breitmeyer, who is Boston Tech Mom. And Boston Tech Mom can be found at bostontechmom.com. You've been watching a special edition of the Belmont Journal. I'm your host. We will be bringing you up-to-date information as we receive it and as we can get a hold of people and uh, get them online here. So stay tuned for uh, more information from Belmont Journal on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm your host, Roger Colton. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time.